Alcohol testing is unnecessary. Several drugs have, he- have been held back that cause dangerous effects on animals, but later turned out to be safe for humans. Additionally, the National Institutes of Health report, reports that 95 out of every 100 drugs that pass animal tests fail in humans. These facts just go to show how irrelevant and unnecessary animal testing really is. So um, if we try and be a bit harsh about this, um, it's got humans too many times, hasn't it? Yeah. So we need another word for humans. You've also got unnecessary twice. Again, you, 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 the whole point in these papers is to show off. So you need another word, really. Okay. So if I just highlight that and just try and think of another word, basically, for unnecessary. Um, okay. So, and the, these facts just go show how irrelevant and unnecessary animal testing really is. Um, it's a bit clumsy, that, because it's got is hanging off, off the end of the sentence, you know, and I, I'd probably like that to be rephrased, really. Yeah, because it's sort of hanging, isn't it, that verb? Yeah. Okay, scientists have developed more humane, efficient and effective ways of non-animal research methods. Good, a nice list-like sentence, an alliteration. Always on chips is one of these methods. So that's lovely, nice short sentence. But then these are micro-engineered devices that replicate human cells. So you want, this is a capital, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Put a capital there. Make that a capital. And micro-engineered is probably hyphenated, isn't it? Have you done the hyphens and dash video? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's hyphenated, isn't it? Micro-engineered that replicate human cells on which vaccines can be tested. I don't think you need the on there. And I also don't think you need um, that comma. Where? Uh, here, I think you can probably leave that out on which, on which, these are my, yeah, because, um, yeah, so basically, yeah, I think you can leave that out. It's quite complicated, uh, relative clauses and when to use the comma. So we'll have a look at the video in a minute. When to use the comma with relative clauses. I think we'll look at that. They're also cheaper, faster and more accurate than animal tests. So that's a nice list again, isn't it? So why we continue to aimlessly kill animals? Are we just pure evil? So yeah, you're hooking in the audience and you're using emotive language. Animal testing usually costs an enormous amount of money as the innocent animals held captive must be fed, housed and cared for. Okay, innocent spelt wrong. It's got rule of three as well, fed, housed and cared for, which is good, under de foresty, isn't it? But that's not it. The animals themselves cost a fortune. Okay, there are several companies which heartlessly breed animals for research purposes and the harm these creatures can be bought through them. This alone shows how researchers treat animals like objects. Okay. The problem is that I'm thinking is that people just breed animals even worse in sort of massive, great big um, factories where they keep millions of chickens who can never move their entire life. Yeah. So that's really horrible as well, isn't it? Yeah. So there's a problem with eating meat, really. Are you vegetarian? Well, uh, I used to be. I used to be vegetarian, okay. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. I think you can sort of have a look at that in more detail, really. Yeah, yeah so like sometimes it seems quite a bit thin. Because I feel like that's rather upsetting up for animals. But at the same time, you can't live like chicken and uh, cows and, you know, Animals that are made for, you know, meat, that are just, you know, killed every day. 
Yeah, so the problem with animal testing is it's appalling to treat them like that, but people are actually, um, you know, killing millions and millions of animals every day, aren't they, and keeping them in appalling uh, conditions. So that's another issue, of course. Anyway, so that's that's good. Okay, enormous is spelt wrong, actually. So enormous, you need to look at the spelling of those two, actually. Yeah. A rather disappointing and unfortunate fact is that the drugs animals received will never actually see approval or public uh, consumption and use. Really? Many see this as a, a major negative aspect of this activity, as these animals died in vain because no direct benefit towards humans occurred. Okay, I think the fact that you could explore there is that it's used for makeup and shampoo and for stuff that you don't really, uh, you know, not essential. Yeah. But if you're yeah. testing coronavirus, I think you probably you could probably use an example of coronavirus and the monkeys they're testing on at the moment. And I think that's a that's a valid use of animal testing, perhaps you could argue. You could also argue, you know, the other side of it, because you haven't got a for and against, that, you know, I'm diabetic and I'd be dead without uh, animal testing because insulin obviously was tested on animals first. And it initially came from beef as well. So, addition, or pork. Additionally, because large amounts of animals are kept together, there is an increased risk of infection that can be transferred to humans, which can lead to more and more problems. Hmm, I think you're talking more about... Um, Factory farming here, aren't you? Well, maybe because that uh, you know animals are kept together, and maybe they're not kept separate. Like you know, within one cage for an animal. Like if, they, if one animal has something you know, like an infection or something, then all the animals can get it. I think you're right about actually that the risk of being transferred to humans. Again, we can talk about the coronavirus, can't we? That there is a a school of thought that the coronavirus came from bats that were in laboratories that they're experimenting on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, actually, that is a good point, actually. But you just need to... Okay, so this persuasive writing isn't just about writing. It's about your... Uh, using your intelligence and... Um, knowledge to talk about an issue... This is why it's the hardest part of the exam. You can't really, you know, creative writing, you can write off the top of your head or write about your back garden or whatever. But actually, this part of it, you don't know what the question will be. And so you have to often, if you want to do really well, you have to have some sort of opinion and, and general knowledge. And that's why I think probably it's the hardest part of the paper. Also, it's why I suggest very strongly that you actually read The Guardian, comment is free, and you read newspapers so you've got something to say. Uh, because you can tell people who don't read uh, every day is they've got not really very much to say. Uh, so you, you're beginning to have something to say, but you need to sort of be more nuanced, more careful about what you're saying. Stay focused on the actual question and do it a for and against. Having said that, that is a good point about the animals kept and actually, you know, they can be transference to humans. That is a point. So you could rejig that. What we are learning here, this is the second time you've done this essay, what we are learning is that we can actually do these endlessly, these essays. We can actually rejig re and rejig essays endlessly. In the exam, you've only got 40 minutes. So... This is a process that we go through now, but when you actually do it in the exam, you've got to spend five minutes planning it properly, really remembering everything you've learnt with me and making sure that you, you know, that you think of all the best ideas. You put all De Foresty and the anecdotes and the rule of three and the imagery and you try and pull in all of your general knowledge. Um, and if you're engaged with it and care about it, you'll write it better as well which you do care about this. So, you know, it's, it, it, you know that's an important thing because you can write emotionally, emotive language. Um, yeah. 
So it is the hardest part of the exam, if you ask me, uh, because you're having to think on your feet about something different. Obviously, the exam does obviously it often use you quite easy things to write about. It chooses things like, you know, should school be longer or should there be more sport in school or something? But again, if you've read around the subject and read lots of different essays um, and articles in newspapers, you've got more things to say. OK, um, yeah, they won't probably give you an annual testing one because that, that's quite complicated. Having said that, yeah, because people have varying degrees of knowledge and some people will be disadvantaged because they haven't read around it. Having said that, I teach these complicated subjects because they're important to, to think about things like animal testing and human remains in museums and climate change, one of my favourite topics to teach. Um, yeah, what else? Anyway, so let's just go back to your essay. Additionally, because large amounts of animals are kept together, there is an increased risk. So you've done that, yep. Yeah. Personally, I think the biggest drawback is the fact this is not ethical. Animals have the same right to live as humans do. They, like humans, are part of Mother Nature and therefore have the right to be free and not to be drugged to death. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So to make it stronger, you need to talk about some anecdotes, some coronavirus stuff, the monkeys that they're testing on, the diabetes, some more imagery. Um, you could say it's cruel and barbaric, um, like playing God. But obviously we do that anyway, don't we? Play God with animals. Both sides of the story. Um, yeah, so, oh, hang on. I missed your first paragraph, didn't I? Over over 100 million innocent animals are burned, tortured and poisoned every year in, in just US labs. Okay, so some nice facts. A novel drug can take 10 to 15 more than $2 billion to develop. Good, some more nice facts. To make matters worse, failure rates occur in about 95% of experiments. Good, excellent. Not only is this a countless waste of animal lives, but also a waste of time, money and energy. Good. So, yeah, so you've got a nice introduction there, and you've got the rule of three. You seem to like the rule of three, which is good. Alliteration, some solid examples, some solid statistics. Um, check your spelling. Proof, always proofread. That's what you didn't do. So, again, proofreading is part of um, writing. Got lots of nice lists. You've got a complex compound and simple sentences. Perhaps some more simple sentences, although you have got, are we just pure evil? Um, there's just one more thing here. Additionally, because large amounts of animal are kept together, there is no Christmas that can be transferred, which can lead to... Yeah, so that, that's wrong. You need to... Um, which shouldn't be standing there on its own, really. Because... It's, it's, a, it's a, a relative clause. It has to be linked. There, because large amounts of animals are kept together, there is an increase that can be transferred. Yeah, so you could put some semicolons in there, basically. That would be easier, perhaps. Okay. Right. Semicolons, hang on. Which can be... Which can lead to more... You could put... So you need to rephrase that. Yeah, so you can put a semicolon. So this... So you can put, in Wuhan, this led to terrible problems. In Wuhan, this led to terrible problems. Yeah? When, comma, it is alleged bats, a bat corona virus escaped, full stop. This is, this, this escaping, or what we say, this, 
this this disastrous event is always a possibility when we test with animals. Yeah? As you can see, my typing is appalling. Disastrous. See, so you have to go through um, and check disastrous event. Additionally, because large amounts of are kept together, there is an increased risk of because actually because large amounts. There's a comma there. Because because you're starting to say that because large, there is an increased risk of infection that can be transferred to humans. Semicolon in Wuhan. This led to terrible problems when to terrible no actually to. Uh, a grim pandemic and hundreds of thousands of deaths. Yeah, if I don't know when deaths. When it is alleged a background is this is it. Okay, so See what I'm saying, yeah? So proofread, try and put some anecdotes in, try and do a uh, an opposite point of view. Um, but yeah, good. It's got some really nice points in there too, hasn't it, basically? I'd give it um, a B, I think. I'm not sure what they'd be in the um, seven. About a seven. Uh, but I would want more semicolons, more sophisticated language, uh, more perhaps more anecdotes and the opposite point of view, really, to make it secure. All right. I like the rule of three, though, and I like your, your sort of, it's almost poetic, isn't it? So well done. Teddy, I, I, think, I think you said in the video, right, against animal testing, but I don't think, I can't remember you saying, right, from like the point of view. Really? Mm, yeah, that's what I remember. Okay. 